Youth-friendly communities understand and celebrate that youth are sensation seekers, use less than optimal planning and judgment, are risk takers and impulsive, and are less inclined to consider the consequences of their actions. It's a pretty beefy statement to make, right? I want every one of you to close your eyes for five seconds, trust me. Close your eyes for five seconds and remember being 16. Okay? On three, you're going to open your eyes and you're all going to out something you did to prove that you were sensation seeking, less than optimal planning and judgment users, risk taking, impulsive, less inclined to consider the consequences of their actions. On three, you're all going to out it together. One, two, three. Okay, I heard pool hall, skip school, didn't wear my seatbelt, stole my mother's car, <laughs> right? We all did it, we know it. So why do we deny that of youth of today? That's the question, that's who they are. And why are they this? Because the brain is still developing. Because they're not, they're, they're not finished growing, right? They're learning many new things in a really short period of time. I said it earlier, what you were at 13 is not what you are at 19. There's a lot of growth that goes on in there, socially, cognitively, emotionally, and physically, right? Youth-friendly communities understand and celebrate this. They say, okay, we've got this group of young people and we need to do something that provides them with safe opportunities to experience new sensations, right? That they offer programs that help youth learn how to plan and make decisions. When I say programs, I'm not talking about, you know, uh, Friday night from seven till nine, they come and cook. I'm talking about services as well. I'm talking about drop-in. When I say programs, it's a very loose program because not everybody is a programmer, they're a service provider too, okay? They take the time to help youth walk through the process of thinking about where, or about why they're here, where they're going, and what the consequences are gonna be of whatever action it is they take. Because youth need that training. Because their brains are telling them they need that training, where they are with growth and development. Okay? Young people need to be nurtured 24 hours a day for the first 20 years of their life through a variety of supportive relationships, opportunities, and programs. That's a pretty solid statement. 24 hours a day for the first 20 years of their lives through a variety of supportive relationships, opportunities, and programs. 24 hours a day. Even when they're sleeping, we want to make sure that they're safe. Right? That's part of the, that's part of the nurturing that they've got a bed to sleep in and that they're comfortable, right? The Positive uh, Youth Development Resource Manual is put out by ACT for Youth, which is the Upstate Center of Excellence um, out of New York. Um, they have done a great job of putting together another manual, another resource um, that you can find online if you Google ACT for Youth. Uh, and they provide even more dimensions to this concept of positive youth development. It's a full-time job to keep our youth safe, to keep our youth nurtured. 24 hours a day for the first 20 years of their lives through a variety of supportive relationships, opportunities, and programs. That's why we have municipalities, not-for-profit organizations, faith-based organizations, community groups, uh, you know, schools, all the different groups that work with youth saying, what are we gonna do to make this better? We're gonna become youth-friendly communities. So really there's four foundations of this concept of positive youth development. We kind of talked about a definition of positive youth development. It's that coordinated approach to making sure youth are nurtured 24 hours a day for the first 20 years of their lives and understanding that they're sensation seeking, lacking judgment, not worried about the consequences people. Right? Is that what we've said so far? Okay. The four foundations are youth friendly outcomes. Why do we do what we do for youth? What are the developmental needs of youth? developmental assets and resiliency and, and generally people who work with youth may have heard some of these as catchphrases we're going to do an overview of them we're going to understand them a little bit better before we leave today <laughs>